YouTube, this is Marcus, the Debt Free Dad here, and today's topic in this video, we're going to talk about a little bit about budgeting for the holidays, for Christmas, and uh, you know how's the best way to go about managing that uh, to do it so you don't start the new year and digging out of a financial hole. Um, just from my personal experience, I've been on the full spectrum of how you can do this. I've been the person at one point in time who would just spend it on a credit card, put things on layaway, uh, come the 22nd of December, I'm running around scrambling to make sure I got the money to get it out of layaway so the kids and everybody can have what they need. And to the full, you know, where it's planned out, detailed, this is what I'm spending, I don't care. If you don't get what you don't like, tough, you better like it. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. I think the biggest thing and the biggest advantage to holiday shopping, especially, you know, Christmas and this time of year, is that it falls the same time every year. We already know that come December, the end of the calendar year, you're going to have to have some uh, money to be able to buy persons you want gifts and do those last minute type of things. Another thing that I like to do on holidays is make uh, last minute donations uh, to certain charities just so I can get that, you know, one, you make the, get the donation before the end of the calendar year, you can get the tax benefit from it. Um, so essentially how I do it is uh, I actually have an account set up uh, that allocates $100 a paycheck uh, pretty much so $200 a month goes to this account and I cannot take any proceeds or funds out of this account until November 1st. So the whole year $200 a month goes in comes November 1st they release these funds transferred to my checking account and typically I have about $2,600 a year uh, go into that account. So essentially the plan this year uh, what I'm doing is uh, $1,600 of that $2,600 is going to go towards uh, buying persons gifts and cards and all that good stuff. Another, The other $1,000 we're either going to save and or put it into a sinking fund that we have uh, for a few purchases that we may be looking at down the road but we don't want to get off track or off course from our debt free uh, snowball, our debt free journey so to speak. I know that uh, a lot of times if you're really hardcore, Dave Ramsey, it's everything 100% goes at the debt and you know, no eating out and uh, no vacations, but um, because we don't intend on spending this additional $2,600 a month, we all want to put $1,000 aside to either put on debt or to put in the sinking fund and use uh, for some of the expense that we may incur a little bit down the road. Um, I think some of the benefits to that is, hey, one, you know exactly how much you're going to have at the end of the year so you can make the proper allocations. Uh, two, I think the biggest part of holiday uh, shopping is realizing that what people actually need. At one point I was, I would buy everything, oh, the kids wanted laptops, tablets, uh, hockey table, basketball court, I mean, I was just looking like an idiot buying all of this stuff that they would only play with for two or three weeks. Now I've come to realize that it's a lot easier for me to give my kids, especially, you know, because they're a little bit older now. My son's 13, my daughter's nine. I can give my son cash, which at the end of the day comes out a lot cheaper than me going out purchasing all of his shoes and his coats and his games and everything. Now I can give him, here's the cash, you spend it how you deem appropriate to spend it and what you got is what you got. So between us giving him cash, of course grandma and grandpa are going to give him cash. Anything he get on the holidays around this time is really up to him, how he uses it, how he utilizes it, how he spends it. Um, with my daughter, is 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 simple as well. I mean, one, she really doesn't want that much. I mean, a, a Barbie doll house here, a LOL doll, whatever, all of them, all of them just look the same to me. But uh, Essentially, you know, we, we make sure that, you know, we have it planned out, the money is allocated throughout the year. Um, we utilize the power of saying no. Um, I know what we've done in the past, we normally would get our kids three gifts. Uh, three gifts. We would get them something they need, something they want, and something to read. So those are normally the three things, and that's kind of how we normally do it. We say, hey, if we don't give you money, you get three gifts. So last year we did the three gifts approach. We gave them something they needed, something they wanted, and something to read. 
that worked out uh, pretty well. This year we may do the same thing or just give them uh, cash uh, because it will come out cheaper. Any adults over the age of 18, as far as I'm concerned, if you get anything from me, it's going to be, a, 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 I'm going to sign you up for a, a free trial of uh, Financial Peace University. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, th I feel like that's the gift that keeps on giving is a cool gift to have. A lot of people in my family are probably going to be pissed like, hey, man, what the hell is this? Financial Peace University, I'd rather you got me a pair of Timberlands or a purse or just gave me the money, but nah, you're going to get what I give you, and if you don't like it, I give it to somebody else. That's just kind of how it's going to go. But uh, that's the video. Again, I appreciate everybody tuning in. Subscribe, like, uh, comment. If you leave a comment, I'll definitely get back at you. Um, and for those of you all who actually haven't had the opportunity to plan out the holiday shopping, and you're like, man, I only got the month of November and kind of the month of December left, so I'm looking at seven to eight weeks uh, left, um, I guess the best thing you can do is make sure you set expectations for the persons you are getting gifts. I know when I was younger, I had plenty of Christmas where there was nothing under the tree. I, the funny story, uh, I remember one Christmas, of course I had nothing under the tree, but I did some uh, shovel some snow earlier, a couple weeks earlier, and I remember I went and bought comic books. And I probably was like 11. I bought some comic books and a, a uh, a Roger, uh, not Roger, Captain Bucky O'Hare action figure, and I didn't even open them. I just left them in a little plastic bag, and I kept them, and then Christmas morning, I ran downstairs and opened my stuff up, and i never forget, I saw my mother on the stairs crying, and I'm like, man, like, I was happy as hell playing with my little one action figure in my comic book, and I couldn't realize why she was crying. Uh, but, you know, when I, she told me, uh, you know, some years later when I was a little older, well, I wasn't crying because I couldn't give you anything. She was like, I was crying because I just felt blessed that you were happy and content with the little bit of stuff that you had that you worked to actually get. And so I think that's a big deal, setting expectations, uh, knowing that it's about giving. You know, my kids know this time of year, what we normally do is we go through anything that they have that they aren't using, clothes, shoes, toys. Uh, we normally donate all that stuff to charity because, you know, there's a lot of people out here that don't have anything. So, you know, you, you want to make sure you set the expectations, make sure people, especially children, know what the holiday is about. Um, I would err on the side of using credit cards personally if I didn't have anything done. I would probably look at my budget if you have a written plan uh, budget and you're able to squeeze some additional monies out of it squeeze those money, I would find additional money, maybe if you had some things around the house that you weren't using that you could get rid of to create some extra money. But I would actually try to take as many steps as possible to avoid doing anything that will put me in debt, starting the New Year's off, having to pay off debt that you splurged on the last two months. And I think the most important thing, and I'm just keep reiterating it, is uh, set the expectation. A lot of times, especially children, if you actually sit down and explain it to them, they can understand. Um, I remember uh, another story, and I'll uh, wrap this video up, where uh, I can't remember, it was something, this was years ago, that my son wanted, and it was costly. And it, back in this stage, if he wanted it, I would just get it. I really didn't care what it cost. And I remember explaining to him, like, hey, I can get you A and B, and you'll get that for Christmas. But C is a little bit more expensive, so, you know, a few months after Christmas, you know, we can budget for it, we'll get it. And when I explained that to him, he was actually able to deal with it, you know. Um, I've had times where I got them board games, just clothes, things they needed. Uh, but, you know, it, again, set those expectations. Try to avoid that if you can. Um, if you have things you can sell off, sell those things. And those are the best ways to approach the holidays so you can start the new year off fresh and not climb out of a hole. Again, thanks for checking out the video. I appreciate it. Subscribe, like, comment, and if you leave a comment, I'll definitely reach back at you. Peace.